The landmarks of Washington, D.C. are familiar the world over. There is the Capitol, Washington Monument, Mall, Lincoln Memorial, and Jefferson Memorial. There are other landmarks in the area about our nation's capital, which are also familiar, but to a more specialized audience. Here, for instance, scarcely 12 miles from the White House, is the David Taylor Model Basin at Carter Rock, Maryland. And here, a few miles to the northeast, lies the Naval Ordnance Laboratory. Towering over Washington suburbs, in Bethesda, Maryland, is the National Naval Medical Center. To the south of Washington, D.C., at Patuxent, Maryland, lies the huge Naval Air Test Center. In the district proper, the Anacostia Naval Air Station is located on the east shore of the Anacostia River. The Naval Receiving Station is also located on the east bank of the river. Across the river, stretching out over 125 acres in the heart of Washington, lies the U.S. Naval Gun Factory, a huge industrial plant of 200 buildings. Here is the headquarters of the Potomac River Naval Command, where PRNC coordinates communications, transportation, personnel, distribution, legal matters, construction and repair, supply, and medical and civil matters. Now for a closer look at some of the major installations and their missions. Here at the gun factory are block after block of great factories and shops, a forge, warehouses and foundries, overhead runways, numerous supply yards, piers, roads, and rail lines, as well as development and testing laboratories. The Naval Gun Factory is a prototype laboratory and factory for new and improved weapons of tomorrow, for the Navy of tomorrow. As a prototype laboratory, the first working models of new guns are built for test. As a factory for new and improved weapons, the Gun Factory is not only a mass producer of standard weapons, but also a producer of intricate weapons that require extreme technical skill and know-how in many different engineering fields. Let's take a quick look at a gun in the making. After paperwork in many departments, planning, engineering, production, and inspection, actual work begins. Raw materials pour into the various processing shops. The pattern is made. Molten metal from the 100-ton-per-day furnaces at the gun factory is poured. Parts are forged, shaped, and treated. Now comes rough machining, finish machining, testing, and final assembly. The weapon is now ready for testing at the Naval Proving Ground, Dahlgren, Virginia. The present U.S. Naval Proving Ground, Dahlgren, Virginia, is 50 miles below Washington on the west shore of the Potomac River. The mission of this 3,000-acre proving ground is research, evaluation, and development of many types of ordnance for the armed forces. Today's modern weapons need elaborate instruments to get required accuracy. These velocity towers are a symbol of the accuracy and precision which is necessary in ordnance evaluation. This is a vital step in firing a range table program. The information which will ultimately be recorded on this sheet will be reduced to ballistic tables which are vital to the solution of any fire control problem. This coal chamber is one of the several control temperature and altitude facilities maintained at Dahlgren. This unit is capable of subjecting ordnance material to simulated altitudes of 50,000 feet and temperatures of between 70 degrees below and 125 degrees above zero. The value of such research is readily understandable in the light of our military commitments. These, as well as the many other activities of this station, are indicative of the contribution Dahlgren is making to the science of ballistics and the effectiveness of naval ordnance. The Naval Powder Factory is located in Indian Head, Maryland. This 3,000-acre installation is one of the Navy's principal centers for developing and testing propellants. These highly trained scientists working in modern laboratories are constantly improving present propellants and are conducting basic research pointing toward more effective propellants for the future. Propellants are first produced in laboratory quantities, then in pilot plant quantities, before they are finally put into mass production. 
To ensure correct operation and safe handling, all propellants are thoroughly tested before being issued to the fleet. The Naval Powder Factory's production facilities extend from the manufacture of traditional gunpowder to control boosters for the Navy's latest guided missiles. The Naval Ordnance Laboratory, White Oak, is located at Silver Spring, Maryland. The laboratory covers an area just under 900 acres and includes many unique facilities for research and scientific evaluation. The laboratory serves as the new idea factory for the Navy's Bureau of Ordnance in the development of new and better weapons. Ideas may be born in the non-magnetic area where the buildings are constructed of non-ferrous material or in one of the five wind tunnels located in this building at NOL. But no matter where the idea is born, the idea must become a firm plan in the drafting room before development can begin. Let's follow the typical development of a magnetic influence mine. Special material required to construct the prototype weapon is made at the laboratory on equipment such as this hot strip mill. Parts and assemblies are assembled and checked off by the project engineer. Once assembled, the weapon is ready for a series of tests in the environmental facilities of the laboratory. To determine the strength of the mine case, it is subjected to a pressure test in this 8-foot by 30-foot horizontal hydrostatic tank. This vessel can exert pressures up to 1,250 pounds per square inch, the equivalent of the pressure one-half mile below the ocean's surface. The free movement of the extenders at specific temperatures can easily be tested in this temperature-controlled room, where the temperature can be varied from minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit to plus 200 degrees Fahrenheit. From the temperature control room, it is only 75 feet to the edge of the climatic control seawater tank, where the temperature of the water can be changed from 30 degrees Fahrenheit to 100 degrees Fahrenheit for testing weapons. This is the moored mine deep water tank. It contains 1,500,000 gallons of water and is 107 feet deep. The mine to be evaluated is positioned on the self-contained submersible elevator platform. The cable hoist is detached and the mine is lowered into the tank. From ports located on the circumference of the tank, evaluation scientists can observe and study the depth-taking action of the mine. Will the hydrostatic pressure valve operate at the planned depth setting? Does the anchor cable pay out at the proper rate of speed? Does the mine have the proper buoyancy to assume its correct attitude beneath the surface? Every possible characteristic of the mine must be determined by laboratory and simulated operational use before it is considered ready for fleet use. The Naval Research Laboratory is located in southwest Washington. NRL's primary mission is to carry out fundamental and applied research and development to increase the combat effectiveness of the Navy. The research laboratory has been a pioneer in hundreds of developments. Communications, detection and ranging, guided missiles, underwater sound gear, and firefighting equipment. This, the first usable radar screen built in the United States, is a monument to NRL as the father of American radar. The atom has caused a revolution in the Navy. Development of the atom for peaceful purposes as well as for warlike purposes generated the need for this research atomic reactor. The reactor facility includes a pool type reactor, experimental laboratory space, and office space. Without proper tools, a scientist can be obstructed just like an automobile mechanic. But with tools like this Van de Graaff electrostatic generator, nuclear physicists can conduct many studies on small particles of matter which could not otherwise be studied. The exploration of the upper atmosphere using research rockets is one of the most intriguing programs involving scientists from NRL since World War II. These airborne laboratories launched at White Sands, New Mexico, collect data on cosmic radiation for NRL scientists. Radio astronomy is a related program for gathering data from outer space. This unique 50-foot dish is the eye for an elaborate radio telescope used in examining solar emissions. This is the Human Engineering Laboratory, where the response characteristics of humans are studied to help improve such things as aircraft control systems. This fits the Navy machine to the man. 
Project Vanguard is the name assigned to the Earth Satellite Program. Here, Dr. Hagen, the project director, dismantles a scale model of the three-stage rocket that will be used to launch the satellite and compares the scale model of the satellite to a full-scale model. Project Vanguard, like the development of the first usable radar screen and the detection of radio waves on Mars in September 1956, are only examples of research conducted at the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory. The David Taylor Model Basin, situated 12 miles northwest of Washington, is the largest and most complete model basin in the world. Here in the woodworking shops, scale models of ships' hulls are produced. In this, the world's largest model basin, our ship's models are tested. This wave-making machine can simulate the actual sea conditions a ship will encounter anywhere in the world. The model's performance during testing in the basin will closely approximate that of the real ship. And from lessons learned, changes may be made to designs which will save many millions of dollars in construction and operating costs. Here in the circulating water channel, the largest research facility in the world where water can be circulated past a stationary model, the action of water on a submarine hull and its propulsive efficiency is studied. This atomic submarine model was tested long before the keel of the SSN Nautilus was laid. Here in the aerodynamics laboratory, research and development tests are performed on aircraft, guided missiles, and airborne equipment. The Naval Air Test Center, Patuxent River, Maryland, is located 60 miles southeast of Washington. The air station is situated on a 6,800-acre tract of land at the confluence of the Patuxent River and Chesapeake Bay. This well-equipped station has three large seaplane basins, as well as concrete runways long enough to accommodate our largest aircraft. The air station serves as the base for squadrons of the Atlantic Fleet. But the primary mission of this air station is testing new aircraft primarily designed for naval use. To provide for testing, this entire hangar has been rendered free of all electrical influences for the test and evaluation of electronic equipment in aircraft. This steam catapult, complete with boilers and associated equipment, is maintained to test aircraft in order to determine their suitability for launching from aircraft carriers. In the armament test section, the capabilities of an airplane to accomplish its design purpose in battle are determined. The actual flight testing of an aircraft under different stress situations finally determines its acceptability for naval use. To provide qualified pilots for testing aircraft, the test center maintains a test pilot school. This highly select school takes experienced fleet pilots and gives them an intensive six-month training course. The course includes academic studies and engineering courses and many hours of practical flight evaluation. Upon completion of the course, these future test pilots will know how to properly flight test and evaluate new aircraft. The United States Naval Observatory is located in northwest Washington. In these buildings are powerful telescopes, cameras, and other instruments by which Navy scientists obtain celestial information from the heavens necessary for establishing the correct time and for preparing navigational aids. The nautical and the air almanacs enable navigators the world over to fix the position of their ships with speed and accuracy. A very important activity of the Potomac River Naval Command is the Naval Hydrographic Office, located in nearby Suitland, Maryland. Every oceanic air and sea voyage anywhere in the world will require using charts from the Naval Hydrographic Office. Day and night protection of the world's sea lanes from hazards to navigation is the most important service of hydro. Let's see how this is done. Observed changes in land configuration and observed hazards are accurately plotted and reported to the hydrographic office by the most rapid means of communication. The newly reported matter is evaluated, plotted, and word of the new matter is broadcast all over the world. The information is disseminated by radio, teletype, and, when necessary, in the appropriate publications issued by the Hydrographic Office. 
The National Naval Medical Center is located approximately one mile from Bethesda, Maryland. This 242-acre site encompasses one of the world's finest medical centers. Located here are six separate commands under the administrative jurisdiction of a central command. The commanding officer of the medical center is an admiral of the medical corps. The hospital command unit serves as a general hospital for the diagnosis, treatment, and hospitalization of active and retired personnel of the Navy and Marine Corps and their dependents. This 1,300-bed hospital is famous for its outstanding patient care. The hospital is fully equipped with all modern facilities. The hospital carries on an active and vigorous residency and intern training program. One of the hospital's most important jobs is the rehabilitation program. The Naval Medical School is fundamentally a postgraduate institution. Its chief mission in peacetime is the training of medical officers and hospital corpsmen of the Navy for service ashore and afloat. Special emphasis is placed upon certain phases of medicine and surgery, which are of particular importance and peculiar to the Navy. These laboratories serve whenever a local laboratory of a naval hospital, dispensary, or ship desires assistance. The medical school's tissue bank has pioneered developing and evaluating new methods of preserving human tissues for grafting purposes. The Dental School Command offers the Navy's only graduate school of dentistry. The School of Hospital Administration trains officers and upper grade enlisted men as administrators in all business divisions of naval hospitals. The Medical Research Institute conducts research contributing to the health, safety, and efficiency of naval personnel. Research Institute scientists have contributed heavily to studies on the biological effects of radiation. The Naval Photographic Center is located on the Anacostia Naval Air Station in Washington. This modern and efficient laboratory is the center for all phases of Navy photography. The Motion Picture Division begins its job with the creative work of planning and writing a script. Under expert direction, the scenes are shot on this sound stage. Here, the film is developed, dried, and printed. The film is then turned over to the Editorial Division. In most Navy films, the commentary is spoken by an off-screen narrator. The composite print is approved at a screening in the main theater. The required number of prints are made and the film is released for distribution. In the still picture division, facilities exist for handling 1,000 8x10 prints every hour. These facilities include developers, contact printers, enlargers, washers, and dryers. Keeping the Navy out in front in the photographic world is the job of the test and evaluation division. This is NPC's film depository where millions of feet of preserved film record naval and marine activity and historical events. The U.S. Naval Receiving Station lies just across the 11th Street Bridge from the Naval Gun Factory. The station performs the usual functions of a receiving station. Logistic support is provided for virtually all Navy enlisted personnel assigned to duty in the metropolitan Washington area. The station also maintains the records of most naval enlisted men stationed in foreign countries. The Navy School of Music is also located on the station. It trains and provides personnel for Navy bands throughout the world. The receiving station also quarters the U.S. Naval Ceremonial Guard, which forms the guard of honor for government functions, military funerals, and parades in the Washington, D.C. area. Among the other activities under the purview of the Commandant Potomac River Naval Command is the Deep Sea Diving School at the Naval Gun Factory, the Explosive Ordnance Disposal School at Indian Head, Maryland, and the Naval Communications System at Sheltonham, Maryland. Last, but by no means least, the Potomac River Naval Command maintains military administrative control of the U.S. Navy Band, a band famous for its music at official functions. In the eyes of the Navy, the finest band in the United States.